Hello everyone and welcome. This is the fourth video chronicling the adventures of the Jewel One. We began with how to set up our transfer from Kerbin to Jewel, even though this vessel has a very low thrust to weight ratio. And in the last episode, we looked at how to use the gravity of Jewel's moons to not only get your capture about Jewel, but to further tweak ourselves into this nice orbit that we now have about Jewel, saving us a ton of fuel in the process. With this episode, the fuel savings are going to continue as we're going to use Jewel's atmosphere to continue to reduce the altitude of this orbit, a process we call arrow breaking. And the goal of all of this is to end up with a capture around Lathe, which also, by the way, has an atmosphere, so we're going to take that to our advantage, performing an arrow capture. But the first step in all of this process is to lower our periapsis so that it enters into Jules' atmosphere. Oh, let's, let's do a quick save, because this is going to get sketchy <laughs> so actually i'm not even going to use a maneuver for this i'm just well actually i should check because i don't want to do this and then end up having a moon encounter one of the moons and then having that mess me up again so all i'm looking for here to keep this on maneuver is getting this periapsis into jules atmosphere just a little bit it shouldn't take much maybe 180 kilometers And I can see that that's not getting me any encounters with any moons. So that's pretty close. I think pretty good there. Let's go with 180. So that's 20 kilometers into Jules' atmosphere. Whether this ship can actually withstand that or not, I have no idea. So we are absolutely 100% going to quit save at this point and give myself permission to redo this again. There is 200, so we're now into the atmosphere. What does RCS do for me? Oh yeah, there we go. 180.05 kilometers. So let's set up an alarm. And this one's gonna be for our periapsis. Now right now it's giving us a one minute warning. I don't think that's good enough. I'm gonna give myself, I don't know, let's say 20 minutes of a warning on this. Uh, because I don't, <laughs> I do not want to go crashing into uh, Jules' atmosphere before I'm ready. We're going to get really up close and comfortable with Jewel here. Switch our camera to this. This will make it look more dramatic. All right, so that gave us plenty of time before our encounter with the atmosphere. Whoops, I'm sorting too. Okay, so what I want to do in order to, first of all, I want to close everything up. And then we're going to put this onto the prograde vector and actually most prop go for the surface prograde vector. There's probably not too much of a difference between the two. Oh, there is a little bit. Oh, that's the target orbit. Yeah, a little bit of a difference because surface is in relation to Joule's atmosphere. That's what you want. We're going to keep all of these air brakes deployed. They're helping to bring the lift back. And then we're going to um, take this heat shield and we're going to inflate it. And then the other thing we're going to do is pump as much fuel as we can forward. We want our center of mass as far forward as we can make it. So there is a fuel tank up here at the top and we got little fuel tanks down here at the back. So we're gonna take all of these fuel tanks. If I thought about this ahead of time, I would have adjusted the flow priority on these tanks so that it actually drained the back ones first, but I didn't think about that ahead of time. so. We're going to pump as much fuel as far forward as we can. Again, the whole idea here, mass as far forward as you can make it, lift as far back as you can make it. Hopefully this will be okay. If not, we quick saved. You guys are smiling now, but it's going to get scary pretty fast. All right, here we go. And we're trucking it like we're over eight kilometers a second. So we're going to be hitting this, even though we're not going too deep into the atmosphere, we're going to be hitting it with some speed. Good thing to watch is that time to periapsis. Once this gets down to zero, you're past your lowest point and on your way back up. So we got about 35 more seconds of tension, <laughs> of high stress. 
Oh, this is looking pretty all right so far. Don't want to jinx anything. Knock on wood. 20 seconds to periapsis. And the worst is going to be over. It is still holding that prograde vector. Oh, maybe my para. Okay, 10, 8 seconds. 5 seconds to periapsis. And we are now on our way up. Okay, that was not nearly as terrifying as I thought it was going to be. Let's uh, see what our orbit's doing. Okay, this is okay. We'll see. Here's lay or er, here's lathe what we're shooting for, but this is doing a decent job of bringing that down. Okay, I'm pleased. I am pleased. I am pleased. All right, dramatic stuff is going to stop. Unfortunately, now that this is inflated, there's no way to deflate it. I don't want to jettison it because I want to keep it. Um, so we got this great big ugly mushroom on the front of our ship now, kind of spoiling the view for uh, Valentina here. I'm sure uh, her view is now not. Yeah, that's just great. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? All right, we are out of the atmosphere. That came out okay. What's our final orbit? I think I want to get this a little bit lower again. This is going to be hitting lay that quite, I want to get this apple wapses right down towards lay. So what I think I'll do, that went pretty well. I think I'm just going to ride this around again. Again, we're going to do a quick save. Um, because this might bring it down too far, but I'm pretty sure I can safely go through. I mean, I'm, I'm the periapsis hardly went down at all and we've slowed ourselves down. So if it was safe that time, it'll be safe the next time. Lock ourselves onto the surface prograde vector once again. So what we're looking at, what does it give us our, yes, Slade's altitude is about 21,000 kilometers. I'd love to have that be a little bit more than that. So we're going to keep an eye on our Apple Apsis. If this gets below 21,000 kilometers, I'm going to have to revert and try that again. And after this second arrow breaking pass, ended up with an orbit where the Apple Apsis was just below that of Val. Not low enough yet, but definitely moving in the right direction. So we're going to go for arrow breaking pass number three. And again, between these, I'm making absolutely no adjustments at all. I'm just letting it ride around. And the thing I'm really paying attention to is that resulting apoapsis of that orbit. I want it to be just above 21,000 kilometers. Down about 24,500 kilometers for our apoapsis. We are getting into the thinner part of Jules' atmosphere. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Got a lot of encounters bouncing around. We'll try and see if we can sort that out. <laughs> but I think I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Man, that's pretty good for just guessing at that initial altitude. So the next step in this would be to get my periapsis out of Joule's atmosphere, turning this into a stable orbit. So I time warped out to apoapsis and just burned a little bit prograde there. This was an entire three meters per second of vacuum delta V to get my periapsis just 500 meters above Joule's atmosphere. I mean, in this game, out of the atmosphere is out of the atmosphere. That's all you need to do. Just skimming over the cloud tops. <laughs> nice. Okay, now let's see if we can facilitate ourselves an encounter. So we're quite a ways away from it for now. So let's first figure out what orbit we're going to be encountering it at. So we'll just pop ahead in orbit. That's not close. That's pretty close. We can probably figgle that one around. So we're going to move that maneuver out of the way. We're going to put a maneuver down here at periapsis on our current orbit. And let's see if we can get these closer together with a little bit, let's add a little bit here. Prograde does it, prograde does it, there we go, prograde does it. Okay, focus our view onto lathe. This time I want to come in in a prograde direction, which is around this way. That's our exit. And I want to be into lathe's atmosphere. So, uh, let's see here. Back on the maneuver. Bring that in. Lathe's atmosphere is 50 kilometers. Uh, 
There's 62 kilometers. Let's bring down that scale. 50 and uh, I want to make sure to get a capture this time around. That's my idea. I don't know what altitude is going to be required for said capture. So I'm going to go for about 35 kilometers. So I can see here that a burn on my current periapsis will set this up in four days, two hours, and 41 minutes, which is going to be after a couple of times around Joule after that. 21 meter per second burn. Okay, let's do it. Slowing down here at the end. Let's look at it from Lathe's perspective. Oh, we're still not there yet. Let's go a little more. Oh, it's not showing, is it? Why is it not showing us? Okay, let's use a little RCS and not bring it down to zero. Okay, that's zero. Let's close that. Oh, there it is. That was weird. Okay, uh, 28 is a little tight. Let's, what happens if I use RCS to kind of back off a little bit? Yeah, this isn't changing. Turns out that having an encounter a few jewel orbits ahead in time has kind of confused the game. So to rectify that, I simply time warped ahead a few days until I was on the same orbit as the encounter was, and then I could see what was going on. It turned out my closest approach with lathe was about 36 kilometers. I decided I'd just go with it. We're going to time warp to our encounter with lathe. Delete and close. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, do a, t a quick save right here, and we'll tweak our periapsis with Lave while we're in Lave's SOI. Let's get into Lave's SOI. There we go. Okay. Uh, I think, I think, I think. Let's get rid of this. I think we're ready to go for it. So, let's get ourselves down there. Hopefully this will go well. Hopefully this will be a capture. Coming in at about a little over three kilometers per second, a little less than three kilometers per second. This is less than the velocity you would come into Kerbin with if you're coming back from the moon. So I would think this should be okay. <laughs> I don't know though. Never done this before. That's why we quick save. Oh, there we are. We are now in the atmosphere. We're about 46 sec, 45 seconds from periapsis. Come on, baby. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, we've lost it. We've lost it. This is why we quick save. <laughs> we'll try this again for sure. But what is happening here? It is the lift from that deployable heat shield it brings the center of lift too far forward and that makes this thing want to fly backwards once the aerodynamic forces become too strong and you might be wondering why wasn't this a problem around Joule well Joule has an atmosphere that's 200 kilometers high and so the atmosphere increases in density much more slowly up towards the top part of the atmosphere than would be something like for lathe where the atmosphere is only 50 kilometers high the atmosphere is getting dense very very quickly very very fast but you know I was undeterred and by the way I did get this to work I just thought showing some of these failures and then iterations to get towards the success is as instructive as just seeing the final product as well so I tried this again increasing that closest approach from 36 kilometers to 42 kilometers just using RCS I wasn't spending any of the liquid fuel for the engines same result again, <laughs> fortunately. Uh, so I tried one more time at 45 kilometers again. Couldn't hold on to that prograde vector. There's definitely a design issue here. I mean, more reaction wheels would definitely probably help in this situation. That would be something if I tested this thing properly, I probably would try. But I really am determined. I want to get this thing to work. And then I thought, well, you know, if this thing wants to flip around backwards, why not let it flip around backwards? What would happen if I went through with an altitude of 45 kilometers, but backwards? 
Now keep in mind, when you were seeing those explosions, those were mostly the air brakes that were exploding. And so I just retracted the air brakes so they weren't in the airstream and then that wouldn't create as much of a problem. Unfortunately, there still are things exploding here and those are the RPGs that I mounted on the side. Very, very fragile and they're not enjoying this. Anyway, after going through backwards at 45 kilometers, I didn't get a capture. So I tried it again at 42.5 kilometers and I got Bill to go out there and reposition those RTGs. If they're exploding because they are too much into the airstream, well, I have these 2.5 meter service bay. Let's get Bill and his laser welder and reposition the RTGs safely inside of those. And with that now done, it's time to get Bill safely inside. Try this one more time. Yeah! <laughs> we are on our way back up. We have gotten ourselves a capture. I win game. I win lathe. You cannot defeat me. Indeed, after this pass was completed, I ended up with an apoapsis of 425 kilometers, but I wanted to do some further arrow breaking passes to bring that down even further before I finally got myself into a stable orbit. Now you do have to be careful with this. If you end up bringing your apoapsis down too far so that it as well ends up into the atmosphere, well, then you are going down and this vessel is not designed to land. So give yourself permission to quick save and experiment. Find out what's working. Give yourself permission to revert back and try something else. There is a mod called Trajectories out there for those people that like to mod their games that does take all the guesswork out of this and I highly recommend that mod if you are doing a lot of arrow breaking. I'll put a link down there in the doober doob. Anyway, what I ended up doing was raising my periapsis to 47.5 kilometers. That's only two and a half kilometers into the atmosphere. And a pass at that altitude brought my apoapsis down to 278 kilometers, after which I raised my periapsis a little bit more to 48.5 kilometers. I also realized at this point that the aerodynamic pressures are going to be a lot less. I can get away with going through in the more dignified forward direction. <laughs> And I ended up deploying those air brakes once again, though. I'm starting to suspect that maybe they're not doing very much. They might not be in the airstream, and that would explain why I was having those flipping out types of problems. But, ah, well, I got it to work anyway. And I ended up doing two passes at that altitude. That ended up bringing down my final apoapsis to 135 kilometers. And at that point, I just said to myself, you know what? That's it. I'm good. I'm going to circularize at that altitude and put myself in this nice little equatorial orbit about lathe. And I do want to point out that with all of this done now, I have 3,921 meters per second left in the vehicle. And if you go back to the previous previous episode and look closely you will see that we entered Joule's SOI with 4,113 meters per second. That means that on a measly budget of 192 meters per second, we got our capture about Joule, we visited three moons and got a nice little orbit about one of those moons. Anyway, our almost 4,000 meters per second is plenty for getting these folks safely back to Kerbin. But how are we going to do that from our orbit about Lathe? I mean, we're not just in orbit around Joule, we're in orbit about a moon going about Joule. What is the best way to get ourselves from this situation back home safely to Kerbin? That is going to be the topic for our next tutorial. I hope to see you then.